on, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome back to The Huddle, presented by BetUSTV. We got the forearms in the house. Mr. Dan Mitchell flexing on us, showing off the forearms. You love to see it. We got TD Finstock, as always, in the Let's house, go. represented. We got another jam-packed show today, breaking down some winners and some losers of the offseason. We're pretty sure two weeks from today is the big day. It's the NFL Draft. We're excited to get things started here on the huddle. If you're new to the channel, folks, don't forget to subscribe. Okay, we're so close to 6,000, and I would love to hit that by the end of the week, if not by next week. We better get up by the NFL draft. I mean, come on now. We're killing it right now on this YouTube channel, and it's because of each and every single one of you guys tuning in. Shout out to the chat. We love you all. Dan, how you doing today, my friend? You're looking good. You got a fresh haircut, I see. Thank you, man. I definitely appreciate you planning the show today. Sometimes I like to sit back and be the one answering the questions. You know, I didn't even look at your topics either because I just want to come in here raw, baby. That's exactly what I'm feeling. Pause for a second. TD, how you doing? Yeah. Pause. Uh, I'm doing great. I'm doing great. Um, I can't wait for this show. Um, I think um, I'm just ready to get in this huddle and turn up, ladies and gentlemen. I'm excited because the NFL draft is literally two weeks away, and a lot of teams are going to pick players that they think are going to help them get that ultimate trophy, which is a Super Bowl. So I'm excited about it. I can't wait for it to go down. Let's do it, man. Let's do it indeed. Woo! All right, folks, hit that like oh, Dan, yeah? So I feel like the energy's down right now. I think both of you said that uh, y'all were feeling a bit under the weather. Is that right? Correct. <clears throat> just a little, just a little. It's been raining, gloomy outside, you know. Ah, uh, uh, yeah, uh, dude. I had it yesterday, bro. Sniffles. Yeah, I'm trying yeah, to vitamin C up, you know, to, to, but I'm, I'm good, though. I'm good. Energy's always high, though, baby. We're alive. We're breathing that beautiful air. Let's go! Come on now. <laughs> Come on now. Hit that like button, folks. We are live yet again. I missed you folks last night in the AFC's round table, but we're here live on the huddle, which is more important, okay? Now, the first topic we want to break down is which team has improved the most this mm. offseason because I think there's a lot of teams that you can kind of break down of which teams have improved the, improved the most on paper, okay? Because you look at what happened last year. There's a lot of teams that all of a sudden took a huge leap, right, in terms of just going from last to first, or becoming one of the worst to the best, and now they're just doubling down and going crazy in the offseason, while there's other teams that have not done anything and are kind of taking a step in the wrong direction, okay? So, uh, TD, we'll start off with you. What are some teams, or just name me one team that you feel like has improved the most in the offseason based on just on paper and all the moves they've done in free agency and the trade market heading into the NFL draft? Uh, that's a great question. Um... Oh, man, I'm going between two teams right now. I'm trying to decide. Um, I'm, I'm trying to pick between the Tennessee Titans and the Houston Texans right now. Um, both of those teams um, really, really, really went out and made some differences um, on their rosters. I want to go with the Houston Texans because at the end of the day, they were already closer than Tennessee. And I think feel like they are true contenders now with the moves that they've made this offseason. Um, the, I mean, just look at all the players that they were able to bring in at the running back position, wide receiver position. Um, it's just crazy. Defensive side of the ball, and they already were stacked. But when you look at the Tennessee Titans, you know, they were the bottom of the division pretty much. You know, um, they had a young quarterback. They got rid of Ryan Tannehill, Derrick Henry, ushering in a new a new day. But they bring the running back in um, and mix in. They get the wide receivers. They already had um, one. They get the pair over there, and they build from scratch, and they bring in some key defensive pieces as well. I'm going to have to settle with – I'm going to have to settle with the Houston Texans, though, because I feel like they are true contenders, man. When I look at the best teams in the league, I know people may laugh at me about this, but I think they can compete now with teams like um, the Kansas City Chiefs. I think they can compete with Buffalo. I think they can compete with Baltimore. This is how I truly feel, and I think that they have enough weapons. They brought in enough to be a force to be reckoned with because when you got a young quarterback making that kind of money, you can load up, especially if that kid is balling. And boy, is he balling. So I got to give it to the Houston Texans. 
Yeah, I mean, the Houston Texans have made a laundry list of different moves, especially, you know, you, you can say that they were the most improved team without the Stefan Diggs trade, and then they traded for Diggs. <laughs> and, now, and now he's on the damn Houston Texans, <laughs> okay? So you got Nico Collins, and you got Tank Dell coming off a crazy rookie year, and mm -hmm. Stefan Diggs. You add in Joe Mixon. And Joe Mixon. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, that's ridiculous. The Houston yeah. Texans are definitely going all in with C.J. Stroud on their rookie contract. Dan, do you have another team that's improved, or was the Texans your team that TD stole from you? So I'll tell you what, I have a couple, and so I certainly have a couple. And so the way that I look at improvement, it's not necessarily where you end up after the leap. I'm talking about the largest leap. I'm not saying that either of these two teams are going to be, oh my God, contenders with the Kansas City Chiefs, but love what the Tennessee Titans did. Certainly do. They were faced with a position where they needed to change their identity with Derrick Henry moving on to the Baltimore Ravens. They realized that under brand new head coach Brian Callahan. And now what they do is that they add a Calvin Ridley, who I know was a disappointment last year, but still over a thousand yards as a receiver in Jacksonville. Probably one of the quietest a thousand yard seasons you have seen from a wide receiver in quite some time. And then obviously with D Hop at the end of the day. And then as long as that they can go on ahead and invest in that offensive line with Legereus Sneed in the secondary, I think this team is going to be competitive. I think that they are far better right now, even before the draft, than what they were this previous season. Another sneaky team, as much as it pains me to say it, I would say the New York Jets have done very, very well oh. this season with several free agency moves. And in my opinion, as an AFC East fan, I think that we need to hope that they miss on a couple of draft picks because as long as Aaron Rodgers can stay healthy... Like we've established on this show over and over and over again, all they need is just above average QB play, and they will probably be a 12 plus win team. Yeah, most definitely. I would have to, I would certainly have to tip my cap right to the Jets and the Titans for the best off seasons thus far. Well, that's perfect, Dan, because now I don't sound delusional and biased to say my New York Jets because we had a division rival say that it's the Jets. It's of course the Jets. You kidding me? You see what we did this offseason? TD's so upset right now. He's like, are you kidding me? Because this truth hurts. I know it hurts, TD. It's you can't believe it. Job. You actually no. had a chance to win the division last year. You fumbled it, and now you watch what the Jets did this offseason. We filled in all the holes. There's literally not one hole on this team. The Jets bring back their uh, safety today, which was a big move, by the way, for the Jets. A core special teamer who is a very big piece of the secondary in Ashton Davis. So welcome back, because if you could say there's one weakness on this team, it's the safety unit. Well, the safety unit just got some reinforcements back. Let's freaking go. The Jets are one of the most improved teams this offseason because you know who else was a big offseason addition? Aaron Rodgers. Aaron Rodgers didn't play last year. We won seven games without Aaron Rodgers last season. So you add Aaron Rodgers to the team with Hassan Reddick, with Tyron Smith, with Mike Williams, with all the new boys on the offensive line and John Simpson and Morgan Moses. I can keep going. You bring in Javon Kinlaw, a former first round pick next to Quinn and Williams. I can keep going. You want me to? Because I know you're scared. You don't want to admit it, baby. The Jets are loading up, and they are absolutely stacked on paper. And being good on paper does not translate to Ws. You have to get it on the field. You have to stay together. You got to get chemistry and win football games in order for all this talent to really come to fruition. But it's hard to argue that the Jets are not one of the best, if not the most improved teams in the league. Because you got to keep in mind, Aaron Rodgers is a, a new addition this offseason, realistically, because we did not see him last year. The Jets are a completely different team with him, obviously, on the field, as well as Tyrod Taylor, who is a way better insurance plan than we've ever had, especially, you know, what, what in a win-now mode that the Jets are in. So, yes, thank you, Dan, for saying the Jets, so I don't sound biased with my take. You're right. See, see, hold on, hold on. See, this is where – this is where, the question was the most – improvement not one of the most improved the most the improved most, team the jets the yeah, one I'll, I'll, team in the in a, yeah, they've improved the more than the Houston texans are well, you kidding me yeah the texans won the division so, won a playoff game last year i well, mean do they uh, so make it seem like the texans were bad last year so so one thing is they just a set of wins. We're trying to, so obviously we're trying to create a fun show here at td we can't all just say the texans come on right? 
It was saying, yeah, 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 uh, you one of the best you teams, I would say. I mean, Houston I'm sorry is... to tell you this, but I am not scared <laughs> of the Houston Texans one bit. I know it's just one game, oh. but what that Jets defense did to C.J. Stroud, they made him look like a bum, okay? Everyone's scared and like, these Texans, bro. Give me the Texans week one. Okay, give me C.J. Stroud. The guy looked like an absolute I hope bum that does defense. It's to also stop pretending that a sophomore slump does not exist. I'm not saying C.J. Stroud's going to take a step back. Oh. He's been cr- I'm saying it's not crazy. It's not crazy to expect if C.J. Stroud does not start off as hot as he did his rookie season or if he doesn't pick up exactly where he left off. I'm sure he will because he's an incredible quarterback. He's one of my favorites. Bro, I mean, so C.J. Stroud. Stroud let Zach Wilson win player of the week against him and out-dueled him. Zach Wilson out-dueled him in the rain, bro. He lost to Zach. Yeah. Wilson. One baby. game. One, One game. game. Bro, and it's not it's let's let's pretend that's not a fluke. That Zach Wilson got, was a fluke. I, but listen, the defense that the Jets did to CJ Stroud was no fluke. We gotta go to the chat on this. Most improved this offseason, Texans or Jets. The Texans, Texans won the Jets. division and won a playoff game last year. Most the Jets improved. had seven wins. How much uh, more proof can the Texans get than what they did last year? It's crazy to me because to me it's not even close. It's Bro, not even close. Okay. The Texans are like, no, 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 like no. way out there on everybody and what they but did can this you please, season. Can you please factor in the fact that add Aaron Rodgers as the offseason addition for the Jets this year? Because he was not on the Jets last year, technically. Did, yes, he was. He played a snap. This is what I mean. This is where you're starting to troll. <laughs> I'm not See? trolling. The Jets the are way is- more improved. We have a new quarterback. We have a new oh. offensive line, a new weapon. The Texans have the same quarterback. They got a new weapon. They got a new running back. I mean, the Jets have a new quarterback coming this year. Brand new. Did, okay, did the Texans lose players due to injury last year? Yeah. Yes. So are we Did they supposed lose their quarterback? Stay- are we they lose their yeah, no, no, they didn't use their quarterback, okay, but that's that, not the end all be. The yes, quarterback is. isn't the what? only factor. It's yes, no one's it fault is, that the bro. Jets If CJ Stroud got hurt, they would not even touch the division. Are you kidding well, me? Well, I don't know. When they go no, get I a, do know. It, it's their job. It. It's their job to get a good backup. It, it's no one's fault the Jets failed at their backup position. It's no one's fault but the Jets. They weren't prepared for it. All I'm saying is the Houston Texans, in my opinion, by far – outclassed everybody this year in free agency and made the biggest jump just because they made the playoffs does not mean you still can't have the biggest jump their talent that they brought in alone can probably make the playoffs this team is immediately a super bowl contender the jets were a super bowl a lot of people believe super bowl contender last year yes the quarterback got hurt and that derailed them but those things happen i'm sorry the houston texans most improved this all season how about least jets improved are, jets are loaded <laughs> I'm not going. I'm not gonna gonna front. The Jets are loaded. I'm I'm tired of fronting on the Jets. They're loaded. They're they're loaded, man. They're a great team right now. I mean, you look at that roster. You know, 20, 25 teams in the league would be right now. Man, give me that roster to go into war. I, I mean, I give I give it up to the Jets. But Richie, you're a homer, man. That's the only reason you said Jets, bro. Did, did I say it or did Dan say it too? Though? Both of you. So how? Both. Dan Homer. proved I'm not a homer. Though. Hey, listen, that was a. Dan a would never say the Jets unless he genuinely believes it, you know? And I'm not a Jets fan. And listen, I didn't say that they were the most improved. I said that I looked at teams of what were like the largest jump things, like good pieces by itself. And so the mm. Houston Texans had a hell of a good starting point. I still think. Point. Okay, on I'm paper, talking from the gutter, dude. You know what I'm saying? On paper, <laughs> like who has Rose the better roster, the, the Houston Texans or the New York Jets? The Houston Texans. No, they don't. On paper, the close. Houston okay. Texans. Richie! Not even you? close. Do you want to know why? It's simple. Our defense doesn't even come close to their, t- their defense. We're stacked on defense, bro. Oh, that's that's the biggest thing. 100%, bro. On paper, I, the Jets are a better team than the Texans. Bro, they obviously Nico are, have... Autry resign. You, you got Daniel okay. Hunter. I mean, oh. these guys made Hassan some Reddick moves. Is better. Al Shahir. <laughs> Give me one player that's better than any player in the Jets. 
Name one player in the Texans defense that's better than the, the top four guys in the Jets no, defense. But we're not saying that, Richie. What we're saying is collectively, collectively, you have a great defense, but what you're basically saying right now, it doesn't even come close. I don't know about that. No, no, no. No, no, no. I don't think it I think it comes close. But the Jets mm. literally stampeded them last year. The Jets stack up way better against these Houston Texans than you think. Like Without we dominated. The Without Daniel Hunter? Daniel Hunter. Like, that's going to make the end-all, be-all, bro. Are you kidding me, bro? The Jets have the better running back. They have the better wide receiver. They have, obviously, C.J. Stroud is a more dynamic, young quarterback, so I'm not going to bring up Aaron Rodgers for C.J. Stroud mm -hmm. because that kind of cancels itself out. And we have the better – I can go position by position on defense. We're better than the Houston Texans on paper. Just saying. Okay, who's going to have the better season? Well, I think uh, a lot of it has to do with the schedule – but I think both teams are going to win the division. And the New York Jets will have a better season. Okay. How about this? We'll have the same record, 12 wins. Okay. I mean, that's and fair. We'll beat, and we'll beat them head-to-head -head again. Okay. That's fair. Beating the Houston Let's go, Ruben. Ruben, where are you at? <laughs> In the chat. I want to I wanna get Ruben so on is here. it at home or is it away? <laughs> this is at home again. It's at home in mm. MetLife. Damn. Hopefully it's at week one, Sunday Night Football. Give me CJ Stroud. All right. Well, let's get into the next topic. Call me a homer all you want, baby. These Jets are taking flight. Way too early NFL honors predictions. I wanted to get your thoughts of who's going to win MVP, who's going to win Offensive Player of the Year, Tough. Defensive Player of the Year, Comeback Player of the Year, okay? So, damn. This is good. I should have prepared, but it's okay. I'll go <laughs> off the cuff, baby. Off the cuff. Yeah, so. MVP, Offensive Player of the Year, Defensive Player of the Year, Comeback Player of the Year. We'll start off with MVP. Who is your 2024-25 MVP if you had a crystal ball? And you can check out the odds on BetUS as well. TD, who who you putting your, your uh, cash on? Uh, we, we start with MVP, right? Yeah. Man, oh, man. MVP. The 2024-25 MVP is going to be. Do, 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 do. I'm going to go with CJ Stroud. How did I know you are going to say that? I mean, he loaded. He got everything around him. I just, I think, because the team success is going to be there too. I can well, see yeah. him doing it. I think that's a popular MVP pick. I really do think that a lot of people are predicting that. Dan, is he didn't say it's going to happen, but he did say sophomore slump is a possibility. So yep. do you have any thoughts of C.J. Stroud being an MVP this year? No, it's – I feel like I don't even want to say this. But you know what? I'll say it. It's going to be Patrick Mahomes again, dude. Again? Be like he Mahomes again. I mean, I just have that feeling. He's going to go out there, scorched earth. And so they're going to get them a nice little rookie receiver that's going to add one more weapon. And he's just going to go out there and just dominate. Go wow, probably you're so sad saying that. Yeah, I hate <laughs> it. I hate it. I'm trying to be objective. A part of me wants to believe that Josh Allen goes out there and just scorched earth, <laughs> you know? And he has the I'm him season. I'm him, baby. Digs who, bro? But... I don't know. I mean, say that I'm putting money down. It's at plus 700 right now. So, who's the favorite? Of course, it's Pat Mahomes at plus seven, then followed by Josh Allen at plus 800. Then Tua. No, and then Joe Burrow at plus 900. And Lamar at plus 1,000. And CJ Stroud at plus 1,000, too. And Tua? Where's Tua? Tua? Yeah, where is Tua? Let's see. Richie, you're a hater, <laughs> man. Scrolling down. <laughs> I just want to know. Plus, plus 1,800. Sneaky MVP candidate. What's Aaron Rodgers? Oh. Hey, huh? sneaky MVP candidate, Mr. Jordan Love. Yeah, I thought about him, but no, I couldn't do it. What's what's um what's um Aaron Rodgers? Rodgers plus uh, same exact odds as Tua. Is he plus under eight. him or above him on the list though? Well, it's the exact same odds. Yeah, but which one's at the yeah, top? He's trying to. No, he's above because I'm pretty sure it goes alphabetical. Ooh. Alphabetical, mm. you know That's it. the only reason. That's the only reason. Yeah, alphabetical. they know it. <laughs> Are you kidding me, baby? Bet you guys know the Aaron oh, Rodgers. 
If you buy me five times MVP, bro, that's crazy. Stop. No, I'm not gonna pick Aaron. And so I wonder MVP. if like Bet US's odds like are influenced like by um, us, us basically, right? Because they have Josh Allen as like the second most likely to win MVP. Like, I wonder if people making the books like watch our shows and they're like, "Damn, dude, that Dan Mitchell, he really believes in Josh Allen. We better give him plus eight hundred." <laughs> No, no. No, I don't think so. <laughs> Listen, but I will say this. Josh Allen is always a good MVP candidate. Um, yeah. But he just, you know, he's always a guy who may even finish top five in voting his entire career. He'll just never win one. <laughs> to, a, to a time. Frank kind of like Super Bowl. All right. Well, my, my MVP pick, I th- might have to agree. Like, I could feel another Mahomes MVP. I could see Joe Burrow going crazy this year. Uh oh, bum, bum. He sucks. He don't even be in that same breath. T. Higgins is gone. Uh, but yeah, Mahomes or Burrow is my two picks. But mm. now it's time for the Homer picks for me. Offensive Player of the Year. Oh, I've been consistent gosh. on this from the beginning of the off season, and I'm not coming off of this. My prediction of Offensive Player of the Year is Brees Hall because he is going to be the entire offense, bro. Bro, this guy was fourth in the NFL in yards. Fourth coming off an ACL. Fourth. (laughs) Fourth. Therefore, he has his season underneath his belt of coming off the ACL. The Jets will be using him as a weapon out of the backfield. They're going to be feeding him. The, the offense is going to – it's going to be the Brees Hall show. Like, he is going to get so many touches and so many opportunities, and he's going to take full advantage of it. I've been looking at the odds of Brees Hall being offensive player of the year right when the season wrapped up, and I'm going to stand on it. I think he has a Christian McCaffrey-level season in him, which is not going to be – Christian. it's going to be Brees Hall's season, baby. Brees Hall's going to set his own standard. Call me delusional all you want, but actual NFL fans – that sees Brees Hall's talent knows that's an actual possibility. He has offensive player potential written all over him. If you don't see that, you're a literal blind hater. Like TD. Listen, Richie. Why are you laughing, TD? Because we all know who's going to be the offensive player of the year. Devin A. Chain. No, I'm just playing. Uh, no, but no, in all seriousness, Tyreek Hill again. Tyreek Hill. It's not, like it probably won't even be close. This time he'll actually get 2,000 yards. You know, um, some bad play late in the season hurt him, but he also missed um, some time. So he'll get 2,000 yards this season. He'll win offensive player of the year. They'll be arguing that he should win MVP, but he won't get it. But he'll still get offensive player of the year. And, I mean, that's an easy one for me. We have the most dynamic weapon I mean, the most explosive weapon, the most unstoppable weapon in the NFL, especially our division, you know. Um, so Tyreek Hill, by far, Brees won't even come close to what he's going to do. Yeah, he will. Mm. Time will tell. Dan, who do you got for Offensive Player of the Year? All right, man. I have a, uh, a wild to... card. And I have a Monroe St. Brown paid. for the Detroit Lions. I have Amon Ra St. Brown mm. absolutely like finishing like top three in receiving yards. He's going to absolutely explode this year. And the Lions got a hell of a lot better defensively. I'm still high on the Lions, especially for the NFC North. But I think that Amon Ra St. Brown, he's coming up on a potential contract year. He's going to be good, bro. Trust me. He's going to be playing for that Amon money. Ra. Amon Ra St. Brown, offensive player of the year. Interesting. All right. We got Tyreek Hill, Brees Hall, and Amon Ra as the Offensive Player of the Years. Now, Defensive Player of the Years, this one's interesting. This is a little harder to predict. Um, TD, we'll start off with you. We already know where you're going, Richie. Um, you go. Defensive Player of the Year this year will be... Do, 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 do. Yeah. Um, Jalen Ramsey, for sure. Yeah, Jalen Ramsey, man. Yeah, baby. Woo! Yeah. Ten interception season, lockdown, back to his form. He Come played on, well. Off, he played well off of injury um, last year, but now he takes that next level and has his, you know, 
show his true prime before he starts his decline over the next few years. So I got Jalen Ramsey. Mm. Oh my God. Can you be serious now? For me? It's give me TJ Watt. Did you act? Wait, I was waiting for you to give us your real answer. I was just joking when I said that, TD. It is my real answer. I thought he played phenomenal. (laughs) I thought he played phenomenal. You know how hard it is for a corner to win defensive player of the year? It's like impossible. Exactly. And I think this year is going to be the and year he's for way, He did not do it in his prime, and he's way past his prime. What makes you think he's going to turn the clock back? Bro, he's at plus 6,000 to win for a reason, you know. Better go get on that bet, ladies and gentlemen. Plus 6,000 bet, you <laughs> ass. Check it out. Um, I truly believe that he's going to win it, man. It's, it's going to transition from the pass rushers. I think a lot of quarterbacks are getting back into the flow of getting rid of the ball quick. The pass rushers' numbers have been going down. Um, I know some guys are still balling out and numbers going up, but um, I think it's going to be a corner this year. They're going to break that mold. But he's not even the best corner in the league. Like, how it is he going to win defensive it, player of the year? It, it, don't, it, it doesn't mean that you're the best corner in the league. At the end of the day, it's about this season coming up, yes, it Richie. Does. This season, well, you know what? He's probably the best corner in the league for career, for, for a full career so far. So I think he's going to do it this year. And he's going to have he's gonna have a phenomenal year. That's more laughable than what I said about Brees, by the way. I hope you know that. Okay. Dan, who you got? I'll tell you what, man. I think it's going to be T.J. Watt, sleeper pick, Max Crosby. I think T.J. Watt probably should have won last year. I think the injury kind of set him out. Who I mean, won last year? As, it was Miles Garrett. Miles Garrett. And so a lot of people were surprised that he won and it wasn't T.J. Watt, but I have a feeling that he's going to come back with a vengeance and – and win it out. But I see Max Crosby being a potential as well. But TJ Watt, baby. All right. TJ Watt, I got my defensive player of the year is going to be Micah Parsons. I think that he is going to go crazy this year. Um, I think that he has a lot to prove still. I think that he's going to put the team on his back. And I got Micah Parsons. Hey, Richie. Let me ask you a question. Let me ask you a question about that in all seriousness. Um, Do you think there was something to the fact that he wasn't getting any penalty calls last year? Because I I, I watched some of the games and yeah, I mean, it was kind of like, like, I mean, guys can tug, you know, he's beat him around the edge, the extra little tug and everything. He gets no calls. I mean, um, what do you think about that? Yeah, I never really noticed it. I don't watch a lot of Dallas games. Um, but I feel like when it comes to a, a player like him, they have to make the calls. And I also feel like the defensive players is not getting the benefit of the calls recently. I just feel like yeah. it's uh, it's an offensive-driven league. And even like blatant holding penalties and all these penalties is you know protecting the quarterback, protecting even offensive linemen. Um, so – I think that Parsons is going to get some calls this year. At least I would hope to like, if you're getting held the way that he gets held when you're a wrecking force like that, it really makes offensive linemen more vulnerable for penalties. And the (laughs) NFL has got to be all over it. I think it was like the uh, few weeks left in the season when he got his first call or something like that. And they were, they've been complaining about it all season. So we'll see this year. Well, we shall see. Parsons is actually the favorite on bet us to win that award. So the final award, actually, it's two more. I do want to get into the coach of the year as well. But comeback player of the year is one I do want to talk about. Uh, this is an interesting one. Because <laughs> you know who I'm taking, baby. Ooh. Ooh. Now, it is interesting because you can say there's multiple candidates for this. There. Multiple candidates. Yeah, I also don't like it. this award because it's there's a double-edged award. Because you can have someone who was healthy last year and just have a good season – win the award like Geno Smith did or a guy coming off an injury come back like there should be two separate awards like in the NBA comeback player of the year most improved player of the year I think there's two different awards that they kind of combine into one yeah. um, which is why like the that's why the comeback player of the year award for me in the NFL is kind of weird but I'm going to double down and just give my guy Aaron Rodgers the love because I think that even if he goes out there and puts up the numbers that he does that he's expected to it's comeback player of the year, ready, ready, waiting to happen, baby. Brees Hall got snubbed of this award last year and because of Joe Flacco. I mean, come on. And I'm excited, man. I think that this is the year where Aaron gets that award. See? The chat agrees, baby. Mm. 
How about you, TD? Who do you got? To pick Aaron Rodgers is blasphemy for me, and let me tell you why. Look at how many people were in his situation. What you're basically saying is that Aaron Rodgers is going to have a better season than Joe Burrow, Deshaun Watson, he will. Kirk, Kirk Cousins. Well, man, yes. I mean, uh, I mean, it's so many guys that went out this year. I mean, you might, I mean, there's so many you can add into this conversation, but I'm going to go with Deshaun Watson. Uh, shocker. Well, I mean, it's it's coming from the lowest point, in my opinion. You know, Aaron Rodgers just got hurt. You didn't know what he was as a player still, but wow. it is comeback from that. Um, and that's why I agree with you, Richie. It's kind of a skewed, you know, thing. It's kind of weird to me. It's almost like, what if you were MVP five years in a row, then you t- tear something in camp, miss a season, come back, and you go right back to MVP. Your comeback player of the year all of a sudden, you never really left, you know, technically. But um, I'm going to say um, the player that comes back the most and has the biggest bounce back, I would say, is um, Deshaun Watson because he has something to prove playing-wise and injury-wise versus just injury. Come on, Dan. Say Joe Burrow, baby. I know you want to say it. I got Zach Wilson <laughs> traded to the Denver Broncos. Oh. quarterback goes down. Oh. It comes back. Wow. It's the Broncos Purple. to the seventh seed in the playoffs. Oh. I'm just kidding. Can That's you funny. imagine that, bro? What would I do in my life? That would be absolutely hysterical. Um, Listen. It's tough because there's certainly several candidates, especially in the quarterback. I think it would be a hard journey, but I think Nick Chubb is certainly interesting. He had one of the most gruesome knee injuries you've seen at the beginning of the season. If this guy cracks a thousand yards on the ground, coming back healthy. And I mean, I'm not even sure based off of reports of what time he will be back in 2024, but I think Nick Chubb is certainly, certainly up for the conversation in this. And then, I mean, I would say Joe Burrow too. You know, oh, why is that, I'll, man? I'll, <laughs> because, listen, because <laughs> why? He's gonna win a couple of games, he's gonna win a few games, he's gonna win a few games. And it's be like, oh my god, Joe Burrow, man, listen, like we really tanked in our lady sales for Joe Burrow jerseys, so we're gonna give him the comeback. Oh, player. Wow, I mean, wow. is what it is, but like my first pick is gonna be Nick Chubb. That was probably one of the most gruesome injuries I've seen in quite some time, but dude, it's it's hard to bet on. It really, really is. I think that this year, this award is going to transition more into performance based off of what they came back from and not just how gruesome the injury was. So, What did it, Joe Flacco come back from? Being just the couch. The, bench? the couch, yeah. yeah. And so the couch. So I think it's going to be a performance based <laughs> award. So, so what about a performance based award? What about um, Russell Wilson? You think he got a shot? shot? I mean, dude, it's. It's funny with Russell Wilson, right? Because when he's with the Steelers, all they're going to have to have him do is just complete 15, 20 passes, and the rest of the game is on Najee Harris. The rest of the game is on their defense, which normally leads the league in scoring defense, at least top three for the past couple of years. Um, Say that he can go out there and just, like, make one or two big plays a game, I could see him sneaking into that conversation too. In fact, I think, dude, I think a lot of people – are not considering the Steelers for this upcoming year in 2024. Um, don't be surprised if the Steelers and the Browns are the teams that come out of the AFC North for the playoffs this year. The Steelers and the Browns? <laughs> yeah. Well, Because you want every team in that division but Cincinnati. I mean. Well, dude, listen, I'm giving a genuine take here because, listen, hear me out. <laughs> With the Steelers, you have Mike Tomlin on the final year of his damn contract with Pittsburgh. So you know he's going to be coaching the hell out of that damn team. They play for him. They love him over there. If defense can stay healthy, they have two possibilities of a quarterback in which that they got for the price of less than a top 10 quarterback at the end of the day. So as long as they get hit on the draft, man, and if they can get some sort of decent receiver to line up outside with Pickens, Steelers are going to be a good damn team, bro. Yeah, I mean, they somehow made the playoffs last year. Yeah. Luckily, the Bills had him in the first round. I mean. Thank God that game got rescheduled, bro. Mm. Good God. Why? Oh, well, is it snow? Well, that and like some like 50 mile an hour winds or something. Yeah. <laughs> like, during the game, dude. Yeah, it was moved. Well, let's get into the last award, which is the coach of the year. Um, This one's tough. I feel like there's always a coach that comes out of nowhere. 
I'll let you guys know the favorites. Or actually, I won't tell you. I won't tell you. Wow. <laughs> the favorites, really interesting. For the, the favorite, the, year. the favorite well. is very interesting. Uh, yeah, I'm looking at it too. I do not see that being a possibility whatsoever. <laughs> Um, I will stay on my soapbox and I think that Mike Tomlin is going to win it because like I said, I feel like he's going to be coaching for something, whether or not that's financial reasons at the end of the day, I, uh, think that he's really going to make this team, um, step up, especially since it's his last year with Pittsburgh, who knows whether or not that they're going to renew his contract. And I think that that's really going to outline exactly how he's going to handle this season. I think Mike Tomlin's about to go out there and be scorched there this year. How about you, TV? Tomlin? I'm gonna go out on a limb and and and, and um go with Brian Callahan in Tennessee. Oh, from Tennessee. Oh man. Oh dude, you like the Titans, don't you, man? No, really. I'm just I'm think that they're gonna Titans. I think I mean, they'll I have a supporter, but like you're a I think they'll have enough a, a, a lot of team success this year. A lot of times you look at who was down in the dirt or who shocked everybody and made that come up and those coaches get a lot of credit. You you gave the the Texans coach credit last year because nobody expected them to do what they did with the rookie quarterback first year, rebuild everything on deck. You know, um the the Green Bay Packers same thing. But a lot of those teams have now proven, hey, we can at least be at this point, so it's going to be even harder for those coaches to win. The Titans a lot of people have no expectations for. Yeah, they load it up a little bit, but now the coach has to bring that to fruition. The coach has to make that a playoff team. And if they can get in the playoffs, yeah, he has in in and, and he shows some solid coaching in the process, he can yeah. win it. What are his odds? Callahan? Let me see. Mm -hmm. Uh Callahan is damn, dude. He's, uh, he's pretty low, actually. 3,000. Yeah, I got to get on that. I got to get on that. If you want to lose money, go right ahead. I mean, right. It's, 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 a good, it's, it's a good bet, though. You know, I'm actually really shocked that it's, it's funny Salah because, has pretty good odds. It's That's funny weird. because Mike McDonald has way better odds. Mm. So, new, so head coach over at Seattle. And then Jim Harbaugh is the favorite <laughs> and to win. Well, well again, so again that's, it's kind of counterproductive, but if they make a wild card this year, Harbaugh's going to win it. You see what I'm saying? Because yeah, look at where right. they're coming right. from and how they stripped the roster. So I'm shocked Brian Can Callahan isn't higher, but I, I like that bet because it's a high, it's a low risk, high reward to me. So I'll tell you what, I am never betting on the Chargers ever again. <laughs> I refuse to bet on the Chargers to be good in any capacity, in awards, in win totals, in playoff appearances, in over-unders. I'm never betting the Chargers ever again. Mm. What about Sean McDermott, baby? Come on. <sighs> Mike McDaniel, come on. Probably not. Probably not. Mike McDaniel's yeah. a dog. I couldn't bet on Mike McDaniel being coach of the year. Because, I mean, when you think of it, his two-year tenure, you're right there to win the division and you fumble the ball at the end of the season. And then last year, you do it again, but you do it in miserable fashion. You were up three games to win the division. Everybody had the Miami Dolphins winning the division. Everybody. So, and let's be honest, the players didn't execute, but who's responsible? The coach. It has to come down to the coach. Um, and, and we never has his team prepared to play in the big games against um great competition or late in the season. So um honestly, it's a real huge knock on Mike McDaniel and his resume. We're all around here. Mike McDaniel's a genius. This offense is lighting it up, but truth be told, I think the resume is more negative than positive at this point. <sighs> Interesting stuff. Now, when it comes to the coach of the year for me. Um, it's so tough. Like, I, I feel like there's a lot of different guys you can kind of predict. There's always some name like Antonio Pierce, I think is an interesting one. I don't really know if the Raiders are going to do anything crazy this year, but that team definitely woke up when he became the interim head coach. Uh, D'Amico Ryans obviously is another guy. If you're high in the Texans, like we've been talking about, 
Um, Raheem Morris, if you have any hope in that squad. Matt LaFleur, um, definitely not going to say Salah, even though he does have pretty good odds, but you never know. You never know. Mm. So Mm. let's get to the next topic, which is updates on the receivers that is due for contract extensions. Now, there's no reports or any updates on them, but I'm curious to get your guys' thoughts of what to expect from Justin Jefferson, T. Higgins, and Brendan Ayuk. These three wide receivers want some contract extensions. They've not been extended yet. Will either of them be traded? Will all of them be brought back? Is Justin Jefferson going to be playing for the Vikings this year? Is Higgins going to be playing for the Bengals this year? Is Ayuk going to be playing for the Niners this year? Uh Very interesting stuff because these three players are kind of in limbo right now. Dan, what's your overall thoughts on these three wide receivers and where you find them uh, playing this year, staying put or trading? So I want to look at this from a different lens. And by the way, now there is reports about CeeDee Lamb potentially holding out this Ooh. offseason if he does not get a contract as well. So we can go ahead and add C.D. Lamb to this overall conversation. Um, I look at all three of these guys and I look at it through a different lens. What, which one of these players are more likely to hold out if they do not end up getting their contract situation? And I think out of all three of them, I think the most likely candidate would be T. Higgins. He seems to be the one that is most upset about his situation. He is upset about the franchise tag. Um, And I just don't believe that it's financially responsible for Cincinnati to pay T. Higgins the contract he's looking for when Jamar Chase is literally right around the corner at the end of the day. So I see T. Higgins holding out if a trade partner is not found. I sincerely think the T. Higgins move is going to happen during draft night, if I had to guess. But I think that he's going to be gone. With Justin Jefferson, as much as we love to speculate that he's going to be on the move, that he doesn't love Sam Darnold as his QB1, I think he'll probably end up staying over at Minnesota. And then as far as Brandon Ayuk, I feel the same way. I have a feeling that if he doesn't get his contract, I think that he will be back in San Francisco. Will it be you know, his number one option? No. However, I think out of those three, I think with T. Higgins is probably the only one that's going to be switching teams this off season. How about you TD? What do you see from these superstar wide receivers? Um, uh, this is a tough one because, um, I think that I personally feel these are my sentiments. I haven't heard anything, but, um, I think the Bengals are going to do all they can to retain T Higgins and figure the deal out. Um, I think they'll, I think at the last minute they'll work it out. I know a lot of people, yeah, I know that chase has to get paid, um, but I think that they're going to figure this situation out for the time being. Um, Brandon Ayuk, I think he'll he'll be the most upset because I think um, he's the lesser of all of these options. And you want to secure your situation. And you actually want to secure it before the draft in these next two weeks because um, this this draft is loaded with wide receivers. Your replacement can be gotten easily. And then you're pretty much tradable to whoever's on the board, um, you know, whoever missed out in the draft potentially. But then how many teams are going to have the capital to make that type of investment and how many teams are going to have the draft capital to make the trade? Because these guys are, in my opinion, worth some solid draft capital. And you're going to spend it all in the draft, obviously. So, you know, waiting to after and investing a future pick is even tougher for teams to want to do. Um, because they like to see their current situation with their current team and how they do and where they're going to need the help in the following season. So I'm going to say Brandon Ayuk is the most in danger of being on the move. I think T. Higgins, they end up working it out. And Justin Jefferson, the head, um, the general manager, was just speaking on a podium um, recently, and he and they asked him, how many of these quarterbacks do you feel that you could put your career on the line for? And he was like, um, well, I, I don't want to answer that because I, when it's all done, I can answer it. But right now, I don't want to answer that question because it's going to make my phone calls that much harder. And to me, that insinuates they're going to try to move up to get one of these quarterbacks. So if they're able to land one of these quarterbacks, you got to set that quarterback up the right way and keep Justin Jefferson at all costs. So I could see his new deal getting done eventually. So um, 
I say um, Brandon Ayuk is the one out. Yeah, and Brandon Ayuk is also the only one of these receivers that's number two on their team. Yeah. yeah. Right? They got Debo, and they took care of Debo. Let's not forget the whole Debo situation a year or two ago. He was rumored to get traded, and then the Niners eventually resigned him long term. And the Niners are an interesting team because they're so loaded <clears throat> from a playmaker standpoint, and they're taking advantage of a $1 million quarterback, which is so rare to have a quarterback that price uh, being playing at that level that they can win with. So, yeah, I think Brandon Ayuk is the most likely guy. And if you're, if you're the organization of the Vikings, I don't care what stage you're in, you keep Justin Jeffers. And this is a generational <laughs> talent. This isn't just a good receiver. Like, this is one of the best, if not the best receivers we've ever seen in this generation. You lock him up. I don't care if you're in rebuild mode. You lock him up. Okay, this is a guy that you want to build your team around, in my opinion. Dan, you disagree? I mean, I, so I think the question is, is like, what motivates Justin Jefferson? And so does he want the money or does he actually want to, like, leave a mark on the league as a true athlete? Because I hate to say it, Richie, I know that you have a love affair with Sam Darnold. All right. <laughs> but say, for example, that they do go up and they draft a quarterback and he turns out to be a bust. Sam Darnold starts this year, the new quarterback. All Justin Jefferson will become is another Calvin Johnson. Does he want to be a new Calvin Johnson? That's my question. So, yes, I agree with you that I think Minnesota probably should, right? I mean, he's hands down the best receiver in the league. But does Justin Jefferson want to stay there and become a new Calvin Johnson? I don't know. They'll, get a, deal. They'll get a deal done. That's, that's interesting stuff. We shall see. Now, getting into the final two topics. Now, the first of these last two is kind of similar to the first one, kind of winners of the NFL offseason. We're going to get into the winners and the losers of the NFL offseason. Uh, and I feel like the teams that most improved is kind of the same thing as winners, right? You could say the Texans are a winner of the offseason, right? But is there any other team outside of the Texans and the JETSs and the Titans that you feel like have won this offseason that really made some moves that – uh, they're coming out of this, like going into this draft with a lot of high upside, whether it's retaining their own talent and loading up and really looking like a team that's ready to go. Um, I'd say the Rams for sure. Uh, starting off with that team. I mean, first off, we're really able to invest in the trenches. They brought that offensive lineman from Detroit and they were able to retain their guy as well. Really making sure that they can protect, hopefully a healthy Matt Stafford going into it. And so they're already set. So with a very young and promising running back, still have a second year Puka Nakua, still have Cooper Cup going into it as well. I think those moves with the trenches for the Rams uh, was absolutely paramount for the team. And I'll tell you what, watch out for those Rams this year too. I, th I think the Rams are very, uh, I feel sneaky. like people were, they were also sneaky heading into this past year. They were. Like no one, no yeah. one really thought about them. And then they kind of came out there and, uh, did what they did, and I think it's that same yeah. story all over again. And How so about you, to pick First off, okay, listen, folks, there is currently 200 <laughs> of you watching this right now, and unfortunately, as long as my eyes aren't deceiving me here, there's only 70 like button smash, folks. Do us a favor. Hit that like button almost immediately, all right? There's a thumbs up sign in case you don't know what it looks like. Looks like this. It looks like that, baby. Push it, dude. Just push it. Just click it. Just click it. See? Look at right it. over here, baby. That's exactly what we're talking about. Let's get this up to 120 likes. I think that we can do it. I think that we can do it. I tried and to have faith in the audience. I was like, listen, I'm going to check and there's going to be 150 likes. And there wasn't. There wasn't. Broken heart. Help us out. Love y'all. All right. You're up, TD. All right. Who's so for team? me, um, I got two teams. Um See, and, and I understand what you mean by it's kind of the same question as earlier, but I can I can I can see it a little different. And here's why. Before I had the Houston Texans, but this time I'm gonna definitively say two teams, one being the Tennessee Titans and the other being the Pittsburgh Steelers. Why? Because they made themselves more competitive in the division. 
Okay, although I feel like Houston had the best offseason making them contenders, but now the Tennessee Titans could get that number two spot in that division. I feel like they've literally leapfrogged the Colts and leapfrogged even the Jaguars. I feel like Tennessee can be better than the Jags this year. Damn. The same with um, Pittsburgh Steelers. No, I'm not going to sit here and say they leapfrogged anyone because they were already a playoff team, but they could have easily started to fall behind in that division. And now they've continued to boost themselves up. So those are the two teams I feel won in the offseason because they're, they'll maintain their relevance. When are we ever going to mention an NFC team? I mean, we mentioned the Rams, but like... The NFC is weak. It's so... But it's just ridiculous to me. Now we're talking it's, about. It's yeah, just I mean, like... Uh, hey, listen, well, you know what, man? I think... So the NFC is only hope is going to be the NFC North as far as quality football, competitive football. Yeah. And so I don't trust the West. I mean, the Niners, the Rams, cool. But I think the not. But I sincerely believe that this NFC North is going to be good football to watch, like fun football. Packers, Lions, yeah. Vikings. The Bears will be fun. Bears. Yeah, dude. It's going to be... It's going to be interesting. I have a feeling that we're going to be talking a hell of a lot more about the NFC once the season starts up. If Caleb Williams actually steps up to all of the hype. After the draft. Most of After the draft, draft. most yeah. of the real draft action is going to the NFC. Thank God. Washington Thank God. and Chicago. Yeah, but Washington, Chicago, Minnesota trying to move up for their quarterback. I feel like because you know, so. I feel like what what team in the AFC doesn't have a quarterback? The Patriots. Well, they're about to the get Jets. One. Okay. Um, <laughs> no, nah, just the just the Patriots. Not the, the Patriots. I mean, I mean, you're right. I mean, I'm trying to look throughout the AFC. Like all knows? the teams that are quarterback needy are in the NFC. Yeah. 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 That's crazy. Yeah. You think about that. That's why the AFC is so loaded. Speaking of the AFC, though, mm-hmm. losers of the NFL offseason. Mm. I'll let you two go first. Me? Uh, number one, and this is the best possible answer, it's the Los Angeles Chargers. Right now, and the LA Chargers are in a hell of a lot worse position than what they were prior going into it. They literally lost everybody. But Both what did wide they gain, receivers. Though? Their tight end, their running back. Don't forget and what they gained. With Jim Harbaugh, and so I will tell you what, okay, he's a wonderful coach, and I have all the confidence in the world that he is going to elevate this team. Uh, however, I do think that he definitely skinned that team to a point. Next up, the Dallas Cowboys. Absolutely nothing. Mm-hmm. Sitting around, waiting on Dak Prescott. They have no idea what they're doing with him. He's currently accounting for 50 plus million dollars worth of their current cap at this point. And the most exciting free agent that they signed was a long snapper. I'm not worried about it. Um, It's, I'd say it's probably between the Cowboys and I'd say the Chargers, but I feel like there's a hell of a lot more of an upside for the Chargers because I do think that they will be able to improve quite a bit. Yeah, this this one's... um... I could cop out and give the easy answer and say the Denver Broncos. Yeah, um, yeah, they're screwed too. But yeah. uh, instead, I'm going to say the worst team was actually a playoff team because they'll no longer be a playoff team. Um, I agree. I and was... that's the Buffalo Bills. I mean, hands down, the Buffalo Bills. Were not, I mean, what did they do? <laughs> all they did is You stole players. my answer. I, I understand that they're old players, but all they did is subtract. Yeah. They haven't gained anything. So, I mean, what do you mean, this bro? Team, they got Curtis Samuel. No, I, the quarterback's getting old. He's throwing more picks these days. They lost, you know, a lot of the good old faithfuls that knew what time it was. The Buffalo yeah. Bills won't make the playoffs. They'll probably win seven games, and they probably had the worst offseason. They don't have a good draft pick. They don't have good draft picks. They always got to pick the bottom of the crop in every round, pretty uh-huh. much. And even if they yeah. wanted to move up, they got to sacrifice more picks they got holes it's over for the buffalo bills their 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 time their window literally shut and shut slam closed it is over i've been telling people about this for a few years now it was coming and it's officially here 
Fun fact. Fun Dan already fact, gave his answer, Richie. My co-hosts <laughs> for the past two years have gotten very excited about free agency. Oh, my God, Aaron Rodgers is a Jet. Oh, my God, Tyree Kill is a Miami Dolphin. If we've proven anything in this league, all right, and just look at some of the recent Super Bowl champions, my friends. Oh, Championships are not won by signing a bunch of 30-year-old vets and putting them on your team and hoping that they can all put together and come out and win. It's how you draft. And when I look at the Buffalo Bills, now, trust me, was it a sexy offseason? Not by any stretch of the imagination. However, I do look at the fact that we have our – Beautiful offensive line coming right back right now. Signing Lyle Collins as well. I'm super excited about that. Offensive line completely intact. Defensive line completely intact. It's all about the damn trenches. We still have a superstar quarterback. And I trust Brandon oh. Bean to load up talent around this team. Because once again, yes, I'll agree with you. It was not a sexy free agency. But I don't want my team to be a good free agency team only to see all of these geriatrics get injured by week 10 and I'm screwed come playoff time. At the end of the day, I'm trusting my I'm trusting my GM like he always does of being able to hit the nail on the head with his draft picks. I wish nothing but health and success to the geriatrics that you guys ended up signing this offseason. <laughs> well, Dan, yes. I'll give you this. Josh Allen's a star. He ain't no superstar. Oh, he's a so, superstar. No, no, no. Stop it. Superstars Pretty. win ac accolades. No, man, listen, bro. Like, <laughs> I mean, you ever see? He's somebody a star, though. Good. That's good. Never win nothing. Listen, no win, no awards. And okay, so Richie likes to always say this when he's like when he's debating TD. He says, "TD, I could probably put all of NFL analysts in one room and ask if Tua is better than Aaron Rodgers." He loves putting together um, that sort of hypothetical. Richie, same thing, my friend. I could put an entire room of every single NFL, like YouTuber and analyst, outside of our division rivals, and they would all say that Josh Allen is a superstar. I would Stop, put my Dan. Dan. on. <laughs> Dan, there's a difference between star and superstar, okay? Josh Allen had – Richie's right. He has no accolades. He has no – no like 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 – is he in any commercials or anything? <laughs> Absolutely. Like, uh, like, oh, it must Allen. be local. It's must be local. Question, though, man, must what be local commercials. Baby. I have a very simple question. What you has Josh Allen, celebrity, baby? What has Josh Allen done to prove to be a superstar and not a star? Lose in the playoff. So account for like eighty six percent of the offense for the past. No, three you're years. talking not, about see statistically. Statistically, Josh Superstars Allen. Superstars are born in the playoffs, and they're born champions. He has so many knots position. in his back from carrying his damn team, and you even told me that before. If you were to remove Josh Allen from the Buffalo Bills these past two years, they would be lucky to win six games. Plug and play any other quarterback. Josh Allen carries, and a lot of these other, you know, with with QBs are carried. That's why Josh Allen is a superstar. Because he so needs so much of that okay. offense. If Josh if Allen's a superstar, what, what, Allen, what's Patrick Mahomes? Teams, he's a superstar. But I don't think they're on the same level. That's my point. <laughs> Mahomes is a step same above. Level. And so that's that's why Josh Allen's level. a star and Mahomes is a superstar. Right. That, that's my so, point here. And so nobody is on the same level as Patrick Dude, Mahomes. Like there's, what? Listen, it's the Hollywood <laughs> Walk of Fame right now, okay? Listen, Dude. just because I'll say that Leonardo DiCaprio is the best actor today does not mean that I also don't think Denzel Washington is a superstar. It's how it works. It's how yeah, it works. Yeah, but they both got accolades. <laughs> like then. What has like, Josh Allen ever done? The like, best accolade Josh Allen will ever have is being on a Madden cover. That's it. That's a pretty damn big accolade, yeah, wouldn't you say? Yeah, yeah, pretty yeah. Massive, wouldn't you say? Yeah, it's <laughs> I nice. mean, that's pretty big. That's Bro, pretty you don't big. like you got at least what like to be a superstar in the He's NFL. He like, hasn't even been have, an all-pro yet. Dude, yeah, bro, you got to at least – you got to get a Lombardi, man. You got to represent the, the – Or be you gotta, an MVP. You got you to at least represent the AFC in the Super Bowl once or at least win the Super Bowl, at least win an MVP. Dude, dude, I mean, dude. I'm just being honest. Listen, MVP being a star is, good. is from a bunch – of writers who have nothing to do with their time because no one reads anymore, baby. It's all about video. Who cares? Yeah, you do. It's all about video right now, baby. 
all, like, <laughs> yeah, dude, dude. It's all of like these accredited writers that vote, dude. Of course. And so they're just fans with a fancy badge, bro. They're exactly like us. They're exactly like us, but they have a fancy badge because they're a writer. Yeah, hell yeah, man. All these 67-year-olds are going to love this. It's it's how it is. So Josh Allen's a superstar. Yeah, I dare stop. I oh, man, is, listen. He's a superstar. Tomorrow, is Josh Allen a superstar? Yes. Yeah, how, how many first-team All-Pros does he have? Zero. Dude, once again, he doesn't have it's a second from a bunch of nerds already. with the badge. I think he got a second. It's from a bunch of nerds with the badge. They're right. Sure. 2020. Second team all pro. Yeah, one. No, we don't care about second team. See, superstars are like the top of the top at some point. You were number one at some point. Lamar Jackson's were, a superstar. Yeah, you were never a first team all pro. You were never an MVP. You have never went to the Super Bowl. You have never won, obviously, a Super Bowl. You don't have those. You can't even start the conversation of being a superstar, Dan. Okay, we can end the show on this, Dan. <laughs> being a star is just fine. Yeah, being a star it's is great. I wish that, I had a star quarterback. Yeah, except. Wait, ex- hey, yeah, you, 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 you had a. He's, Aaron Rodgers was he's an athletic a freak. Aaron was a superstar. Who we'll see if he, he is. is. He the whole, and so don't even come in here with the Lamar Jackson thing because the second that he's like <laughs> he's three years star, older man. than him and he can't run the ball anymore, he can't rely on his. Uh, and Josh Allen's the same thing. Josh when Allen he can't run anymore, then huh? he's yeah. twenty picks instead of fourteen. Thank you. Hey, it's all okay, right, then. that's gonna wrap up hey. the huddle today. We're hey, listen, I will shave my head. I will shave my head on stream if Josh Allen throws more than 10 picks next year. Oh, oh why would you do that, Dan? You could have said 20 <laughs> and I would have took that. Didn't he, I will didn't shave he my 10, head like, if Josh Allen throws career? more than 10 picks. All right. Yeah, so, you're going to do it right uh, here on the huddle, too. The huddle, please record this, clip this. All, All right. right. Well, you saw what Josh Allen did week one last year against the Jets. Three in the first game. That's going to happen again. Thank you guys so much. For tuning into the huddle presented by BetUS TV, we're going to wrap things up. We're going overtime. We'll see you tomorrow at 3 p.m. and Friday. See you guys then. Shave the head. Thank you so much for watching. If you guys enjoyed the show, don't forget to hit that thumbs up button, folks, and subscribe to the channel. If you hit that notification bell, you'll get notified every single time we go live or make a video here on BetUS TV. Also, do not forget to check out more sports content over at BetUSTV.com. Thank you guys so much for watching. Can't wait to see you guys again soon.